Irwin had heart problems after retiring as an astronaut and died in 1991 of a heart attack, Scott felt that he as commander should have been informed of the biomedical readings. ALFJ2, ALFJ8, NASA doctors at the time theorized the heart readings were due to potassium deficiency, due to their hard work on the surface and inadequate resupply through liquids. The crew spent the next two days working on orbital science experiments, including more observations of the moon from orbit and releasing the subsatellite. Endeavour departed lunar orbit with another burn of the SPS engine, ALFJ-2, of 2 minutes 21 seconds at 21 hours 22 minutes and 45 seconds Greenwich Mean Time on August 4. The next day, during the return to Earth, Worden performed a 39-minute EVA to retrieve film cassettes from the service module's scientific instrument module bay, with assistance from Irwin who remained at the command module's hatch. At approximately 171,000 nautical miles, ALFJ-1, from Earth, it was the first deep space EVA in history, performed at great distance from any planetary body. As of 2023, it remains one of only three such EVAs, all performed during Apollo's J missions under similar circumstances. Later that day, the crew set a record for the longest Apollo flight to that point. ALFJ-1, on approach to Earth on August 7, the service module was jettisoned, and the command module re-entered the Earth's atmosphere. Upon landing in the North Pacific Ocean, the CM and crew were recovered and taken aboard the recovery ship, USS Okinawa, after a mission lasting 12 days, 7 hours, 11 minutes and 53 seconds. The mission objectives for Apollo 15 were to perform selenological inspection, survey, and sampling of materials and surface features in a pre-selected area of the Hadley Apennine region. M place and activate surface experiments, evaluate the capability of the Apollo equipment to provide extended lunar surface stay time, increased extravehicular operations and surface mobility, and conduct in-flight experiments and photographic tasks from lunar orbit. It achieved all those objectives. The mission also completed a long list of other tasks, including experiments. One of the photographic objectives, to obtain images of the Gegenschein from lunar orbit, was not completed, as the camera was not pointed at the proper spot in the sky. According to the conclusions in the Apollo 15 mission report, the journey was the fourth lunar landing and resulted in the collection of a wealth of scientific information. The Apollo system, in addition to providing a means of transportation, excelled as an operational scientific facility. Apollo 15 saw an increase in public interest in the Apollo program, in part due to fascination with the LRV, as well as the attractiveness of the Hadley Rill site and the increased television coverage. According to David Woods in the Apollo Lunar Flight Journal, though subsequent missions traveled further on the moon, brought back more samples and put the lessons of Apollo 15 into practice, this feat of unalloyed exploration still stands out as a great moment of human achievement. It is remembered still for its combination of competent enthusiasm, magnificent machinery, finely honed science and the grandeur of a very special sight in the cosmos beside a meandering rill and graceful, massive mountains, Hadley Base. ALFJ-8, despite the successful mission, the careers of the crew were tarnished by a deal they had made before the flight to carry postal covers to the moon in exchange for about $7,000 each, which they planned to set aside for their children. Walter Ironman, who had many professional and social contacts with NASA employees in the astronaut corps, served as intermediary between the astronauts and a West German stamp dealer, Hermann Seeger, and Scott carried about 400 covers onto the spacecraft. They were subsequently transferred into Falcon and remained inside the lander during the astronauts' activities on the surface of the moon. After the return to Earth, 100 of the covers were given to Ironman, who passed them on to Seeger, receiving a commission. No permission had been received from Slayton to carry the covers, as required. The 100 covers were put on sale to Seeger's customers in late 1971 at a price of about $1,500 each. After receiving the agreed payments, the astronauts returned them, and accepted no compensation. In April 1972, Slayton learned that unauthorized covers had been carried, and removed the three as the backup crew for Apollo 17. The matter became public in June 1972 and the three astronauts were reprimanded for poor judgment, none ever flew in space again. During the investigation, the astronauts had surrendered those covers still in their possession. After word and filed suit, they were returned in 1983, something Slate magazine deemed an exoneration. Another controversy surrounding the fallen astronaut statuette that Scott had left on the moon, arose later. Scott had made a verbal agreement with Belgian artist Paul van Hoedong to sculpt the statuette. Scott's intent, in keeping with NASA's strict policy against commercial exploitation of the U.S. government's space program, was for a simple memorial with a minimum of publicity, 
keeping the artist anonymous, no commercial replicas being made except for a single copy for public exhibit at the National Air and Space Museum commissioned after the sculpture's public disclosure during the post-flight press conference. Van Hoedonk claims to have had a different understanding of the agreement, by which he would have received recognition as the creator of a tribute to human space exploration, with rights to sell replicas to the public. Under pressure from NASA, Van Hoedonk cancelled a plan to publicly sell 950 signed copies. During the congressional hearings into the postal covers and fallen astronaut matters, two Boulevard timepieces taken on the mission by Scott were also matters of controversy. Scott had been introduced to Boulevard's representative, General James McCormick by Apollo 8 Commander Frank Borman. Bulova had been seeking to have its timepieces taken on Apollo missions, but after evaluation, NASA had selected Omega watches instead. Scott brought the Bulova timepieces on the mission, without disclosing them to Slayton. During Scott's second EVA, the crystal on his NASA standard issue Omega Speedmaster watch popped off, and, during the third EVA, he used a Bulova watch. The Bulova chronograph model number 88510 and 01 that Scott wore on the lunar surface was a prototype, given to him by the Bulova company, and it is the only privately owned watch to have been worn while walking on the lunar surface. There are images of him wearing this watch, when he saluted the American flag on the moon, with the Hadley Delta Expanse in the background. In 2015, the watch sold for $1.625 million, which makes it the one of most expensive astronaut-owned artifact ever sold at auction and one of the most expensive watches sold at auction. The Apollo 15 mission patch carries Air Force motifs, a nod to the crew's service there, just as the Apollo 12 All-Navy Cruise patch had featured a sailing ship. The circular patch features stylized red, white and blue birds flying over Hadley Rill. Immediately behind the birds, a line of craters forms the Roman numeral 15. The Roman numerals W. Air hidden in emphasized outlines of some craters after NASA insisted that the mission number be displayed in Arabic numerals. The artwork is circled in red, with a white band giving the mission and crew names and a blue border. Scott contacted fashion designer Emilio Pucci to design the patch, who came up with the basic idea of the three bird motif on a square patch. The crew changed the shape to round in the colors from blues and greens to a patriotic red, white and blue. Worden stated that each bird also represented an astronaut, white being his own color, Scott being the blue bird and Irwin the red. The colors matched Chevrolet Corvettes leased by the astronauts at KSC. A Florida car dealer had, since the time of Project Mercury, been leasing Chevrolets to astronauts for $1 and later selling them to the public. The astronauts were photographed with the cars in the training LRV for the June 11, 1971, edition of Life magazine. ALS J-13. The halo area of the Apollo 15 landing site, created by the LM's exhaust plume, was observed by a camera aboard the Japanese lunar orbiter Selene and confirmed by comparative analysis of photographs in May 2008. This corresponds well to photographs taken from the Apollo 15 command module showing a change in surface reflectivity due to the plume, and was the first visible trace of crewed landings on the moon seen from space since the close of the Apollo program.